Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode we had our character shoot. Awesome! Our character is able to shoot things. There's nothing to actually shoot yet, but our character is actually able to shoot and run and walk and jump and everything else. So we're doing pretty well right now. We're doing pretty well. In today's episode, I'd like to discuss obstacles, and we're going to start off with some very basic obstacles and then move on to one that can actually damage the player. Alright, let's get started. Okay guys, we're going to start off relatively simple by making really a decorative blocker, something that's going to block our character and prevent them from running off of the edge. Currently our character can simply run over the edge of this platform, and I want this to be my first platform in the game. I kind of want to block this area off. And there's a number of different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you right now a very simplistic way. What we're going to do is build a very simplistic object, all right? That object's going to be a barrier, a barrier rock. So, look through your models. I'm sure I gave you all of this stuff. Look through your models and find in your, and maybe it's an environment, rock. Find in, your, find in here your rocks. Uh, there's a number of rocks I've got here. I built these assets uh, for another game a long time ago, uh, and I'm just reusing them here. So you guys can feel free to use whatever you want. I'm going to pick a rock here. Let's try, uh, let's try rock F. That's fine. And these are very large, so I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to put it back at zero, so I'm going to reset it, and then I'm going to make them small. Let's make it a decimal zero two, uh, decimal zero two, and decimal zero two. Uh, that's not so bad, but my character might be able to jump over that. They might be able to jump over that. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it uh, point four, point four, and point four. Four. Ah, point zero four. There we go. That's probably big enough and our character won't be able to jump over it. Now, what I really want to do with this is I want to make something just to prevent the character from being able to go over this edge. It's all I really want to do. And we already know uh, that in order pre to prevent something from walking through something else or to, or to create a collision, what we require is two colliders. All right. Currently we have a collider on our character, so that's all set. What we have to do in order to make this into an obstacle that our character can't cross is simply add a collider to it. So I'm going to add a component, I'm going to add a physics, and I'm going to add a... You can pick whatever one you want, a mesh collider, whatever you want. The mesh collider will actually make the collider exactly the same as the mesh, for example. Uh, and if you really want to waste the resources on that, you're welcome to. It'll give you a really good uh, collision surface. If you don't want to, you can choose something else. I'll choose a capsule collider for now, and we'll make it... Uh, how big is this? 100 by 300? Is that good? 300? That's probably pretty good. Uh, 100 by 300. So I, I just added something that was, you know, in the relative shape. If you want to add the the actual uh, the actual mesh collider, it'll give you the exact same shape as the mesh, and it, it might be worth it. I, it's up to you guys, really. For now, I'm just going to leave it like this, and if I decide to change it later, I will. I'm just going to kind of line this up so it looks looks kind of the way I like it. All right, that's probably fine. Our character will run inside here. Uh, let's make it a little taller and, and lower it a little bit. Actually, let's make it uh, let's make it 350, and then yeah, that's a little closer to the ground, which is better, like this. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So let's take a look at this. Let's move this in position. I'll put it right here. Now, whenever our character, whenever we hit play, our character won't be able to get off the scene. All right, they can jump up there, boom, but they can't get off the scene. All right, that's good. I can run inside a little bit and that kind of sucks. And that's simply because the collider itself is only a, an approximation. Uh, if I really wanted it to look a little nicer, I could just rotate it. Let's just rotate it 90. Uh, no, 180, 180, like that. And our character won't be able to get through there, right? Play. Yeah, that's perfect. That's kind of what we want. We don't want our character to be able to get through there. Um, so that's really what I want to do. And that's and that's that's how you create a, a blocker or a collider of some sort. I want to make sure that this whole thing is on the line. Our character can't leave this, this z-axis. And I want to make sure that everything remains on this line to prevent our character from leaving. All right? So that is a very, very simple way of doing a collider. Now, right now, if I take a look as well, I can shoot through this. Uh, if we take a look at the other side, we can see that the bullets are going through. Last episode, we discussed a number of different things. We discussed the layer option, and what we did uh, is we created a layer that was shootable. So I'm just going to add my rock to my shootable layer. Now, yes, change the children. Uh, now when I hit play and I go here and I shoot, my bullet is going to be stopped by the rock. So that's exactly what we want to happen. So that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, one last thing you can do might not be extremely necessary. Uh, last episode, we also created a physics a physics um, uh, 
material, and I'm just going to add that physics material to this guy right now, so it's slippery. Uh, hopefully that way, when my character is is uh, jumping up and running, he's going to be able to slide down the side a little bit. Let me see if he can. I can hold it there, but eventually he'll physically fall. Um, all right, guys, so that is our first obstacle, and that's, that's really the basis behind all the obstacles, two colliders coming together. All right, let's go on and take a look at something a little more difficult. Okay, so... As far as a blocker is concerned, the rock is going to work really, really well. But let's say you want to build an object that was, first of all, that was small enough that you could jump on top of it, uh, but something else that was also shootable. Uh, so we've, we're going to set something up here that is both shootable and something that you can land on top of it and, and walk around. Uh, this is going to cause a little bit of a problem. So let's take a look, first of all, at our models and let's grab our accessories. Accessories and let's grab a crate and we'll put it in the scene here. I'm just going to reset it. Uh, and I'm going to make it uh, 0 0.05, uh, 0.05, and 0 0.05. That is not so bad. All right, so that's going to be our crate, and that's obviously something that we can jump on top of. Now, we've got a couple of things we have to take a look at here. Let's say, first of all, uh, let's say, first of all, we want this thing to be, uh, we want it to be uh, not only something you can jump on top of, but we want it to be affected by gravity. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a component. Uh, we're going to add our physics, and we're going to add our box collider, obviously. And I think 20 by 20 by 20 should be awesome. There we go. 20 by 20 by 20 on our top layer. Uh, so that's fine. And, and... That's great. So right now, if I if I leave it like this, our player is going to be able to collide with it. Um, if I set it up so that we it is ground, then our character yes, change the children for now. Um, our character is going to be able to jump on top of it. Let's add one more component. Add component. We're going to add our physics, and we're going to add our rigid body. Now this is going to make it interacted by physics itself, and that's great. I can put this up in the air, for example, and when I hit play, my box is going to fall into the ground, and my player can now jump on top of it and land on top of it. All right, that's great. And that's exactly what I want to be able to do. This is an interesting little object that I want my character to be able to land on top of. Now, I've got a problem, though. What if I want to shoot it? What if I want to be able to shoot it? Now, right now, it's a little bit too small. I can't shoot it. But let's say I had two of them, and they were piled on top of each other, and I want to be able to shoot them. Well, the bad thing about that is I can't have it both as a ground layer and a shootable layer. So I have a couple of different options. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, and I don't normally like to do this, um, I'm going to go into the layer below, uh, this thing called crate, and on this layer here, I'm going to add a new, a new uh, collider, a physics box collider. I'm going to make it slightly larger, uh, slightly larger, so I'm going to actually make the size of this box collider, let's make it uh, 22, oops, 22, 22, and 22. And I'm going to make it a trigger. So it's now it's slightly larger. It's a trigger itself, so it's not going to be interacting with the ground. And I'm going to change this to a shootable layer. So right now, the child is shootable, and the, the top layer is ground. When I hit play now, bam, I should be able to jump on top of it still and still be able to land. And I can because it's a trigger. So I'm actually falling through the trigger and landing on top of the, of the actual uh, grounded crate below it. But it's still a little bit too small. Let's make it, let's add another one here. So first of all, that's exactly what I want to do. That's awesome. Let's grab this entire crate. Let's go to our prefabs over here. I'm going to drag and drop my crate onto prefabs. Now I'm going to add a second one. Let's add a second crate. Uh, let's put it at, uh, reset it. I didn't want to do that. Let's put it that's at 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and 0 0.05. And I'm going to add this down here like this, just like that. So these two here should fall on top of each other. All right, let's take a look. Bam, start the game. And they fall on top of each other. Now, first of all, I can still jump on top. Great. And now I can shoot them. Okay? So this, this object itself is both shootable and affected by gravity. I can also push it over. I can push it around. So something you're going to have to consider when you, actually, when you actually build this thing is how heavy is it? All right? If you want to make the crate heavier than the character, then you can simply go into here. You can find your rigid body, and you can add a mass. Let's make it a mass of 10. And when I do so, my character, I think, has a mass of 1, and we shouldn't be able to push it that well. All right? So there you go, guys. That is how you make a, an object that is also affected by gravity. And the awesome thing is, if, you know, if I move it over a little bit like this, this thing's going to tumble and fall. Well, it didn't tumble and fall. <laughs> I didn't move it over far enough. But if I move it over far enough, so it's not actually... Bam. Bam. See, we get a lot of interesting animation out of that.
All right. All right, guys. So I want to take a look at one last type of obstacle. And that last type of obstacle is going to be something that can harm the player. All right. Let's take a look. Okay, so the last type of obstacle I want to create today is an obstacle that can actually physically damage our character. Uh, and we're not going to take a look at the code today. We're going to do that in the next episode. Today we're just going to build the actual uh, object itself so you can go through and start building yourself uh, several different obstacles on your own time. Uh, and that way, we're already we're probably already around 11 or 12 minutes, and I don't want to go much longer than, than 15 minutes at maximum for these episodes. So the last one I want to create, and you guys can create anything you really want. I've provided you with some of them. I've provided you something called uh, the tank trap here. Grab your tank trap and drag it and drop it in the scene, and let's let's zero it out. Let's reset it, uh, and let's make it 0 0.01. Maybe this is right. I can't remember now. 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. Yeah, that's about the right size. Um, this is our tank trap, and we're gonna be we're gonna be using this to damage our player. It's kind of this this little spiky thing. I don't know. It's a little spiky thing I built, um, and we're gonna we're gonna use this to damage our player. So what we want to do is set it up so that if our if our player comes um, within a certain range, lands on this thing here, then our our character is going to take damage. All right. So we already know there's a number of different things that we're gonna need to do in order to be able to have that happen. Uh, we want our player. We want to have the ability to actually react to our player. So to do that, we're gonna add a component immediately, uh, and we're gonna add a. Physics box collider, uh, and let's make our box collider. Uh, let's try 100. I can't remember if this is the right size. 100 and 100. Uh, and let's move it up a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit small. So let's make it 150. Let's try 150. That's looking a little better. That's not so bad. I even want. To, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Maybe even a little bit taller. Let's make it 170. 170. You guys can play with it so you get it to be the size you want. And in the Z, I'm going to make it uh, 150. And that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let's make it a little bit longer in the in the X as well. Let's make it 150. That's too big. 120. And we'll physically move it over in the X a little tiny bit. Just like that. All right. So um, I'm just defining the area that if my character touches, if my area, my character touches this area, uh, then I want him to be damaged. Now, in order for that to happen, if I leave it like this right now, if I leave it the way it is right now, uh, then my character won't be damaged when he touches it. It's currently a not a trigger. I want to make sure it's a trigger. Uh, the trigger will give us three opportunities in order to have code uh, affect our character, or affect anything for that matter. Three opportunities to issue code uh, upon first entering upon staying, and lastly, upon exiting. So there's three opportunities to actually issue code, uh, for code to affect something. All right, so when the colliders come together, when they first come together, there's code. When the player enters it, there's code. When the player exits it, there's code. And when the player stays within this, this collider, there's code. All right, that's perfectly fine for now. In the next episode, we're actually going to add something in here. Now, we've got a problem. If I hit play right now, uh, our character can obviously run through this, and we don't want them to be able to do that. Uh, they can't land on top of it or anything else. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to add a, a new, right here, we're going to say create, and we're going to add a new empty child. And let's just call this thing here uh, tank trap uh, surface. All right, and it's one layer below, and that's perfectly fine. What I want to do with tank trap surface is simply add a component. I'm going to add a physics. I'm going to add another box collider, and let's make this thing here uh, 100, uh, 100, and 100. So it's slightly smaller than than my original collider, and I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move it up like this. Now, this is ultimately going to cause us a couple of issues, and the reason why it's going to cause issues is later on when we try and when we try and issue code. Uh, it's the, the on stay or staying within this trigger is not going to work very well, and it's not going to work uh, because uh, because there's already something within it that's that's affecting it. Uh, I'm just moving this where I like it, so somewhere right around there. So we're going to have to uh, take that into account later on when we actually go through and write the code. But what we can do with this additional surface, with this tank trap surface, is change it from its default state and make it into a ground layer. So now our characters are going to be able to jump in here, and when they jump in, when they jump inside, they're going to be remaining with inside of the damage area. So the entire time our character is standing on this object, they're going to be taking damage. Now we've got one last problem. If I come over here 
and I shoot, we can obviously shoot through it. So what I want to do is go to the top layer, to the tank trap, and I want to set its default layer to shootable. And new, and this time here, I do not want to change the children, so no, only this object. Now when I hit play, I can, I can jump on top, right? I can step down, I can't get through, and I can shoot it. So all around, we are in pretty darn good shape. In the next episode, guys, we're going to write the code that actually damages the player whenever he comes in contact with this tank trap. All right, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Take a few minutes and build yourselves a bunch of different things. Build yourself a bunch of different uh, obstacles that, you, that are going to affect how your player can move. Build some trees, build some rocks, build a whole bunch of good stuff. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. It lets me know what's wrong. But make sure you're telling me in the comments why you gave me a thumbs down. I have to know what's wrong or I can't change it at all. All right, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.